There's no question you know the song, but the music world is a little bit quieter tonight after learning that legendary rocker Meatloaf has passed away at 74. He was born Marvin Lee a day. Meatloaf's career spent more than six decades selling more than 100 million albums and starring in more than 65 movies, including Fight Club and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. His debut album back in 77, Bat Out of Hell, is one of the biggest selling albums of all time. And he later won a Grammy in 93 for best solo rock vocal performance with the song, I'd Do Anything for Love, But I Won't Do That. The reports say his wife and two daughters were by his side when he passed away. The cause of death has not been released. With more on the life and legacy of Meatloaf, we're joined live from London, England, by one of the stars of The Bat Out of Hell, the musical, Danielle Steers, and the host of The Rush on iHeartRadio, Jay Michaels. I want to thank you both for joining us. I want to start with you, Danielle. It is great to see you. It's been a couple years since I got to hang out with you and some of the cast uh, when I was uh, working on CB24 Breakfast. Um, you were, you know, at the heart of the show. You were one of the stars of this show. And I'm curious, what was your reaction when you heard the tragic news earlier today? And what are some of the the things that you remember from your time uh, on the show and getting a chance to hang out with uh, the meatloaf himself? Of course. Um, well, thank you for having me, first off. Um, and I, I was still awake last night. I found out the news very, very early this morning. Um, and I was shocked. I was so shocked. And um, it was just a very surreal feeling because I have met meatloaf a few times and i was so close to his music and i just I, I was in shock and i felt a little bit down all day it's been a bit of a weird weird day um but just getting to sing those songs every night was just so special and i'm just so so glad that he got to see that um, and experience the fun and all the fun that we had on stage he could see that and I'm just so glad that he, he got to see it. We know the man, the performer, Meatloaf, Danielle, but what was he like behind the scenes when you're having those moments with him preparing for your show? Um, one of the kindest, most... He was just so lovely and he was so funny. Um, he always had us laughing, but he, he was just very generous with his time. And I think that speaks a lot for someone who's such like a legend and an icon and this like rock star that he just had so much time for us and was just so giving and just just really kind. And I'll, I'll always remember that about him um, because I wasn't sure what to expect, but he's he was a wonderful, wonderful man. And speaking of being generous with his time, Jay. Uh, you've got quite the story, and oftentimes when, you know, these larger-than-life stars pass away, a lot of these really cool stories start to emerge about uh, the individual, and I, I, you've got quite the cool one yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It was um, right around 2003 that a new radio station had launched in Toronto. Previously, it was KISS 92.5, and then it flipped to a format called Jack FM, which was essentially a rock and roll radio station. And I was across the hall at the time, at CHFI, doing the Mad Dog and Billy show over there. And I found out that because they didn't have any DJs at Jack yet, because they had just launched, they were having an artist takeover with Meatloaf, which means he would come in, he would play his music, he would talk about his songs essentially by himself. So what I did was I went to the boss at Jack FM and I basically begged to be the guy to just push the buttons, to just turn on his microphone and turn it off. And Meatloaf came in, we met, we started the show, he played one song and he started to talk and he looked at me and said, can you talk? And I said, absolutely. So for the next two hours, we played all of his hits. We played ACDC, Van Halen, Eddie Money. He had a story about everybody. Just had a blast. Just so nice and so generous. And then when the show was over, he said, that was really fun. What are you doing now? And I said, well, <laughs> not, what are you doing? Because <laughs> if this is an invitation, I'm in. And an hour later, it was myself, my, my awesome wife, Sherry, and Meatloaf in a private box watching the Jays game. And we just got to hang out for the game. And at one point, my wife leaned over and said, I just want you to know how much my mom loves you. 
And he said, well, give me your phone. Let's call her. So he did. He called my wife's mom. And after she believed that it was actually Meatloaf on the phone, I'll never forget this. He said, um, I just wanted to call you and tell you what a beautiful daughter you have. That is such a cool and story. I, I just, I mean, could this day get any better? And when I woke up this morning and heard the news, I immediately posted, you know, on my on my my Instagram at Jay on the Rush To, the memory just sort of fell out, and it's as vivid as it was the day that it happened. And, and that's, just, and that's the day, Jay. You became the best son-in-law in the entire world, isn't it? <laughs> oh, big points, big points, absolutely, one hundred percent. But you know what I've noticed from everybody's post today is that everybody has a similar thread throughout them which is how kind he was and how generous he was mm -hmm. with his time. And I really got the impression with my brief encounter that he really looked at every day as the opportunity to make the most of whatever it was that he was doing. He truly appreciated his talent. And Danielle, I'm curious, you know, there, there must have been a lot of pressure on, on a lot of the cast uh, from this musical. Uh, and I had a chance, once again, I had the chance to meet so many of you. And uh, there was such a strong camaraderie, but it, I really got the sense that you guys really wanted to do the music justice. And this is not easy stuff to sing. You got to no. sing with your entire body. And, and as a vocalist, <laughs> as a world-class vocalist, and please, if you're watching, go check online on the YouTube videos of Danielle Singh, uh, what, easily the star of the show. I, I'm curious, a, a, as a performer, how did his music challenge you? Um, I'd never really sung any Meatloaf or Jim Steinman music uh, prior to the show. But when I found out that I was going to be singing Two Out of Three Ain't Bad, I knew that <laughs> this was such a massive song. Not necessarily a big, a big sing, but just everybody knows Two Out of Three Ain't Bad. And that was a lot of, that was a lot of pressure. And I thought you kind of had to put a little bit of your own spin on it and make it your own because no one's going to touch what Meatloaf had already done. So there was no point trying to imitate that, especially as a woman as well. Um, so there was a, there was immense pressure, but I will never forget when we did our press launch in Toronto for Bat Out of Hell, Meat was there with us and he opened with a speech. And then we started singing Dead Ringer for Love and he just wanted to be there. And he got, he grabbed a microphone and he sang along with us with his whole chest, like his whole heart. Um, and it was just the most incredible experience. We were like, oh my gosh, Meatloaf is singing with us <laughs> on stage. What is happening? <laughs> um, it was mental, but he saw the show quite a few times and it was terrifying every time he was in, but he just loved it. And he was beaming from ear to ear. And that was so, so nice to see. <laughs> Jay, what do you think Meatloaf's music meant to to generations? You know, your wife's mom. What what was it about Meatloaf's songs and his words and his vocals that touched people's hearts and souls? Well, I think it's a combination of what he brought to the table, what Jim Steinman brought with the lyrics, and I think for so many people, and Richard Krause, who you all know from being on CP24, the excellent film critic, host of, of uh, Pop Life said on our show today on the Russian News Talk, he said, you know, there's a reason that you don't hear artists covering Meatloaf, aside from the wonderful job that you guys did, you know, obviously with the musical, you don't hear other artists try and cover Meatloaf because it's basically impossible <laughs> to rise to that level of, you know, it's, it's, it's rock and roll, it's opera, and it's one of those things that it's so unique that it really can kind of touch absolutely everybody. I mean, there's a reason it sold 40 million records. Nobody will ever sell 40 million records again. It can never be done. You know, you can look at you can look at benchmarks in, in popular music, and when you think about the 70s, aside from the Eagles and maybe Fleetwood Mac's Rumors, is there a bigger album than Bad Out of, Bad Out of Hell by Meatloaf? I mean, Jamie, you know this as a musician. I mean, it's tough stuff to cover. Uh huh. We, uh, you know, the cover band that I play in, we do Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Obviously nowhere near as good as Meatloaf, but it's one of those songs <laughs> that just gets everybody rocking. And, yeah. and, and, you know, you make a good point, and I'm curious, uh, you know, I'll start with you, Danielle. Do you think a, an artist like Meatloaf, who's, whose music transcends generations, I, I'm wondering if you think, you know, if he was launched today, what do you think the reaction of the public would be of a guy like that you know, getting launched into the uh, the social media world, but uh, you know he's uh, clearly he's got multi levels of his, of his talent. I'm curious, what what do you think the response would be if he was launched today? I think it would be pretty crazy, but I still think that he would hold such 
an incredible fan base. Like his fans are so loyal, and I think, I think it would be wild if he was launched today. I think it would be amazing. I would live for that. I would <laughs> love that. Um, but music's changed. But those songs, they're just timeless. They can't be redone. They can't be, you know, jazzed up or anything. Like they're just gold as they are, and they should stay that way. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know this is one of the biggest mysteries in rock and roll. You've both spent intimate time with Meatloaf. I'm curious, Jay, were you able to find out i do anything for love, but I won't do that? What that is? What the, that was? What is that? I don't know, with a guy like, with a guy like Meatloaf, what's left that he hasn't done? <laughs> Danielle, exactly. were you able to get any clarity? Do you know what that is? Nothing. Each to their own. It is what it is. That's the mystery <laughs> of a rock star. That's exactly what it's supposed yes. to be. And you're both sworn to secrecy, even if you have been able to find out, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I knew. If I'd had I one more I baseball knew. game with them, maybe I could have figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Just one more. Jay, Danielle, you both are awesome. Thank you both so much for your time Thanks tonight. You for your candor Thank sharing you these stories. It's great Thank to you. see you again, Thank Danielle you. and Jay. Thanks,